All right, well, howdy. It's April 11th, uh, about 7 a.m. Gonna jump in the swamp this uh, morning. And uh, the goal here is just kind of show y'all how I hunt swamps and specifically how I target and find mature bucks. I'm gonna kind of show you how I go about it, what I look for, uh, some common mistakes that I see that I have I have certainly made over the years, uh, what I've learned from those mistakes, kind of, I guess the whole process uh, of kind of how I go about it. I've got this jacket on because yellow flies are gonna be absolutely atrocious. Uh, they're gonna be pretty bad and it's still cool enough to where I got plenty of water, we'll be all right. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you in the swamp. So approaching the swamp, you can see a defined, this is a big, big trail right here. And uh, kind of, there's a bunch of little sign, some small rubs going up and down this thing. And I'm not saying you won't kill a big one right here. Cutting through this at the base of this little uh, small hill, I already know that there's, I've already been back in there. There's a bunch of cane back in there. And uh, there's some feed trees along the edge of that. And um just kind of looking at this I've hunted this before and I just kind of stage hunt some of this stuff so but but not not the kind of place that uh that I'm really going to target right here plus there's right up there there's uh people sign a lot of old sign and uh you know you see flag and stuff like that and there's some good looking sign up there now but that's one mistake that I've made uh a good bit over the years and figured out is you know, years ago, I used to hunt that stuff and just kind of stick to it. But now, I won't do that. Um, the better stuff is deeper in a lot of times. Now, there's sometimes I'll find a spot that's overlooked, but you've already got people pressure. Uh, I'm trying to get away from folks. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go deep into the swamp here. A bunch of Tupelo in here. And... Uh, Try to get far away from here, and I bet you I'll find something that looks a lot better. And uh, I'll find a good spot, and uh, we'll, we'll hang a camera on it. Now, another thing, I talked about this is a little doe bedding area, and yeah, you can get downwind of this little thicket right here. Uh, Instead of being over there at the base of that little hill, you could maybe get down it up on this side and, and definitely have a chance at a big deer. But I would much rather kind of go deeper. And there is some feed trees in here. I think right on up here, there's a, a swamp chestnut oak and a pretty good size cluster of overcups some water oaks but the thing about the reason why when I'm targeting a mature buck especially on pressured stuff the reason why I don't put much weight into feed trees is because if you find one spot and it's really hot well if you're looking at a thousand acres or something like that there might be another 10 or so trees or feed trees that are raining so the odds that you're gonna hunt that food pattern for a buck come out on the winning side granted your access is right and your wind direction is right you're not getting blown at at 100 does you know it's just kind of higher probability to find the tendency and exploit the tendency of the buck during the rut, which is to cut downwind. Now, will a buck come up to a feed tree during the rut and check those? Yeah, absolutely, but you're talking about there's so many different ones that could be dropping. That's just, I think, in my opinion, what's worked for me, now I'm just telling you what's worked for me, is to take advantage of the tendency on a larger spectrum, a larger scale. You're, 
you're more apt to cover more ground that way more effectively these banana spiders killing me and the yellow fries are horrible uh, you got better odds to to intercept him when you're hunting like oh that right there is a big thicket right now I could get over here and climb on this white oak this dropping or something like that get way over here bow hunting and if it's a wind like this if I'm not cutting closer to where he's cutting the downwind side of all that then um, I'm out of the game so I like to look for spots that that strategically make sense and that give me higher odds to intercept a mature buck so with that being said I'm gonna roll straight up in here it's a big thicket here and there's another way back in there's another big thicket and I'm gonna go straight in there probably I don't know how far it's gonna be a hike All right, so I've walked this creek on down. I've walked this creek on down and it really gets kind of junked up right up here in the end. And so what I'm thinking, you got a thicket and a line down through here. Buck's probably going, he's going to cut down one to that. He can shoot across and hit this right here. And he can just hit down one to this. So this is, this is a good spot and there's a bunch of tracks. There's a bunch of tracks, old tracks. You can tell they're cutting up through there. I think just from what I'm seeing, strategically exploiting the tendency wise, I think this is slam dunk. And you got also, it never hurts to have a bull water oak right here i mean bull water oak right on the transition so let me figure out a good tree right here and uh we'll hang a mock scrape and a camera all right it's right here it's about the safest spot to do a mock scrape i'll hang my vine i brought from that limb Trim will be in is that Tupelo right down here. And it's storming, so I gotta hurry up. All right, it's pretty simple. Got a limb overhanging right here. You got a tight spot, the closest point between that thicket and that thicket. And initially, I was planning on being further on down, but I elected to back up some because there's too much old rubs cutting through here and buck sign back this way so i felt it was just a little bit counterintuitive to be that aggressively up i think more of the buck movement's gonna be cutting through here so right here that's where the scrape's gonna be i'm gonna scuff up the ground real good and uh once i got that done i'll check back in with you all right i got it hung i took the end of it and just scuffed it up with the saw Got the scrape right here. Gonna take this uh, pre orbital gland scent and put it on the end of the vine, and I'm gonna take a leak in the scrape. Alright, just got done raining, but there you have it. You got the scrape, the scrape right there, the vine right there, big thicket right here. It's gonna cut the downwind side of this, hit this, come through here, hit this closest edge, and then keep going. So, this big spot to intercept. Now, I gotta get this camera out. Alright, 
So I'm hanging this camera, obviously. And uh gonna level it out. Alright, so we're gonna level it out with a stick here. I'm gonna turn the camera on. It's it's elementary from here. I mean it's gonna turn the camera on. You're gonna look, there's gonna be three three lines connecting, connected, not connected. It's gonna blink yellow at, at uh, connecting. Then when the middle line hits green, it says connected, obviously. Hey, you're connected. Um, one thing I will do, this is, so it says it's connected. All right, so green. So I'm just gonna shut the door. I'll walk out there with my phone, make sure it's sending me pictures. So I've walked out there and uh, I've got it angled right at the scrape. So the next thing I'm gonna do, this might help some of y'all. I think this is kind of common sense elementary too. But your excess tag, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the end excess tag of this uh, strap and I'll just buy another strap if I need to, but I don't like a bunch of excess sticking out. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the creek there we get a bunch of mud. I'm gonna slap it all on this to kind of dull it up a little bit. It's not for scent. The deer's gonna smell anywhere you've been. It's more so to stain some of that mud, stain this strap into where it kind of doesn't pop as much on the woods. I try to try to find the smallest diameter tree that'll work when I'm doing this. Uh, the bigger the tree you put it on. I mean, unless you've got it sponge painted or something like that, it's just like a, it might as well, in my opinion, be like for fluorescent orange because it will stick out. All right, I'm gonna go get some mud. Really, it's the side profile that I'm more concerned with. People coming. Seeing that strap, seeing that strap from the side, hey, you can put some on the camera, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. You know, kind of dirty it up a little bit. I mean, that seems pretty elementary, but I mean now, looking at the tree, you can't see the strap. Let me clean my hands off and I'll show you kind of what I mean. All right, um, yeah, so back to what I was saying, that, that mud is not for, it, it might help with scent a little bit, but let's just, let's, let's be realistic here. Mature buck, you ain't beating his nose, I don't care what anybody tells you. Uh, somebody sent me something of a guy that was taking cedar limbs and he's sitting there putting, spitting on the ground and put, or putting his scent all over the camera, all around there. And then he's talking about putting cedar limbs on the camera. Man, whatever. The deer's gonna smell you. This is not, just to reiterate, this is not so the deer won't smell this. He's gonna smell everywhere I've been, but my scent will dissipate. They'll start hitting that scrape, and then they won't worry about this. They'll get used to it, but they'll start hitting that scrape. If you look back here, it's not sticking out. It'll dull up some more. So that's just what I'm trying to, people that are coming from here, you know, they look out there, If it was a light tan strap around that tree right there, somebody's probably gonna see it and steal it. Uh, like I say, I'm no authority on it. I'm just giving you my opinion on it and what's worked for me over the years. Hopefully this video is useful to some of y'all that are hunting some of this pressured stuff. And I give you some new ideas. Maybe in general, really no matter where you're hunting, I mean, you can apply the same type principles in other places, it's, it's uh, exploiting the tendency of the buck. So, um, anyhow, if y'all enjoy this, give a like. Probably make a playlist just devoted to this type of thing as far as uh, deer hunting and 
Same thing goes to the springtime. I'll probably have a playlist like this just devoted to uh, turkey hunting related stuff. So Good. I can cover a bunch of different topics that y'all have for whatever you want me to cover. There's a lot to uh, unpack typically. You see me unpack it real time as I'm hunting. Uh, but I figured this would be something to do in the off season. Before fall and before spring, I'll uh, kind of put it together in this type of format. And then maybe we'll do some other stuff where I'll get like a dry erase board or pull up some generic imagery just to give y'all an idea. If the feedback's decent, that might be something I'll do. But hey, I appreciate y'all watching. Reckon I'll see y'all on the next one.